Kia ora koutou, and thanks for watching this video from this year's Wellington College Scholarship Calculus exam. I want to say a huge thank you to Daniel Kelly at Trinity College down in Dunedin for writing most of the paper. Um, this question I'm videoing because I thought it was fine, but apparently I was wrong. Um, I have miraculously nearly finished marking, and just about everyone has got this question wrong. Yet it really only uses level 2 coordinate geometry skills. So in this video, I'm going to go through it pretty slowly. We're going to be proving that any two points, uh, sorry, not any two points, any two perpendicular tangents to this parabola, which is in standard conics form, cut at a point on the directrix, C formula sheet. So we're going to start off with drawing a nice big graph, which I think about five people out of 49 did, and then we're going to go from there. Now, in the paper, I said that you might find the algebra slightly easier if you go ahead and use the parametric form of a parabola given in the formula sheet. And I do think that makes the algebra a little bit cleaner, but because I think most of you are more confident working with the XY coordinates, I'm going to do it that way in here. And you might like to um, try working it out with the, with the other form after you've watched this video and understood it. Okay, so I'm starting by drawing a graph because when I read this question, I don't have a clear picture in my head of exactly what we're looking at. And a few of you made that mistake as well. So let's just go to the next slide. So I've got axes drawn here, but I deliberately haven't drawn the graph ahead of time. Um, this is my parabola equation. So it's a tipped on the side parabola, and it's going to look like this, roughly. See if I can make it actually, yes, it worked, right? So the vertex of this is at the origin, and um, if you look in your formula sheet, you'll see that the directrix is this line back here. And this line back here is at x equals negative a. And you're given that, so you don't need to know that. However, it does really help if you've seen this picture before. Remember, if you want some basics on conics, we've done some in our sessions this year, and Khan Academy is excellent on this. I think I've done some old clunky videos on ellipses and hyperboli, but not on parabolas. So go have a look. So I'm going to delete that directrix line now, because I want to draw that in once I've done the next bit. Let's go back to the question. So we have to prove that any two perpendicular tangents to this parabola cut at a point on the directrix. So first we're going to draw a tangent um, anywhere on here. I'll just change the colour. So we'll draw a nice yellow tangent. And I'm doing this slowly because I want you to see um, kind of how I thought about the question. So there's one tangent. So a perpendicular tangent has got to be one that is at right angles to that tangent, right? So we, if we take our ruler and go like this, I'm just trying to make it look roughly 90 degrees. So it looks like it's about perpendicular there, right? Let's draw in that tangent. And hopefully it'll touch the parabola. Okay, that worked pretty well. So you can see that what we've got is that we've got a right angle and we've got two tangents. One of those is the tangent at this point here, and one of those is the tangent at this point here. Going back to the question, what we have to do, that's the wrong question, here's the right question, what we have to do is to show that those two perpendicular tangents cut at a point that is on the directrix. So looking now at the, um, the graph that we've got, what we're trying to show is something about this point here. And we're trying to show that this point is on the directrix, the directrix is a vertical line with the equation x is equal to negative a. So let's dot that in down there. And once you've done that diagram, I think that really gives you a clear strategy for how to solve this problem. Um, we're going to figure out the first tangent line equation, the second tangent line equation, and then we're going to equate them and show that we must have an x value of negative a. So to do that, a little bit of kind of labeling is going to help me. Let's call this first point here x naught. And let's call the second point down here x1. So notice that there's, there's nothing obviously in common about those two points, although there must be a link, right, to have perpendicular gradients. And the second thing that I think helped me when I first saw this question is just to kind of, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but the if they're going to be perpendicular gradients, then um, this one is on the top half of the curve. And the other one must be on the bottom half of the curve, so down here. That's useful because at the moment I've got y squared is equal to 4ax. 
right? But I can think of that in two halves. I've got y is equal to um, plus or minus the square root of all that. So the top half of that parabola is that y equals 2 root a root x. And the bottom half is at negative 2 root a root x. So we can see that for x0, we've got a y value up here, which I'm going to call y0. And for x1, we've got a y value down here, which I'll call y1. But we're going to get the y values using either the top um, or the bottom one. Okay, what I'd like you to do now, um, especially if you're from Dub C or Wellington Saturday Maths, I want you to pause the video and see if you can now get the whole way through this question, now that you've got a good setup. Remember, what we've got to do is find the equations of the two tangents, and then we have to equate them. Remember that the gradients of those tangents are perpendicular. Okay, so I'm going to keep going with it now. Um, I'm going to work quite slowly. If it's too slow for you, just put the video on double or triple speed. Right, so let's work with the first tangent first. So at x0, y0, we have to find the gradient. I'm going to find the gradient by using implicit. So we've got y squared is equal to 4ax. 2y dy by dx is equal to 4a. That gives me dy by dx anywhere on the curve is equal to 4a over 2y, which is 2a over y. All right, so we're starting off with that. Now, for the first tangent line, we've got x0, y0, and we've got m is equal to 2a over y0. Working from what we had earlier, we have y is equal to 2 root a root x, because I'm working for that first point, I'm on the top arm. Okay, so that gives me y0 is equal to 2 root a root x0, and m is equal to 2a over 2 root a root x0, which cleans up nicely to give me root a over root x0. Okay, let's look at what we've got. We've got m, and we've got x0, and we've got y0. So we're now ready to write my tangent line, and I'm going to use the point gradient version to do that, although it would work fine the other way as well. So y minus y0 is equal to m times x minus x0. We're going to do some pretty easy substitution. So we get y minus that y point is equal to root a on x0 into x minus x0. And straight away you can see that that's going to clean up quite well. So we get root a over root x0 x minus root a root x0. Now we've got some like terms going on here. So we have y is equal to root a over root x0 x plus root a root x0. Okay, and we're going to put that into a box, and that's line 1. Now, on to the next one, um, which is very similar. The only difference is that my equation that I'm going to use for y is going to be the bottom half of that parabola. Okay, so again, pause the video and try and do this bit yourself. Try and get the second tangent line. But if you're watching this and it's near the 2024 exam, please check back and make sure that you haven't screwed it up. So line two. Right, we've got x1 and we've got y1 and we've got m. So m is equal to 2a divided by the new y value. Um, y1 is equal to negative 2 root a root x1. And m will be equal to 2a over negative uh, 2 root a root x1, which cleans up to give me negative root a over, oops, sorry, I, I forgot that I had ink to shape on. Let me just turn that off. Okay, where are we? So the, the twos go and we have negative root a over root x1. So at this point, I think some of you probably went ahead and went, oh, hang on, those gradients multiply to give me negative one. Yes, you can definitely do it that way. You can do this question in a different order from how I'm doing it. I'm trying to do this, I think, the most low brain way that I can do it um, for most of the people watching, right? But you could start substituting different things earlier. I think that this 
pretty level two-ish way works quite nicely. So now we're going to have my line y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Substituting in, what do I get? Well, I've got y minus, uh, what's y? Negative 2 root a root x1 from up here is equal to m, which is over here, negative root a on root x1 times x minus x1. Cleaning up, we get y plus 2 root a root x1 is equal to this. And now I have plus root a and I have root x1. So it should feel somewhat symmetric um, with that earlier equation. I'm getting it now into mx plus c form and I'm going to have minus root a root x1. So that's line 2. Now let's just go back to the graph. I'm going to be quite tight up against the 15 minute limit on this video, but I think that's okay. So where's my graph? Right, what we've got now is we've got the equation for that and we've got the equation for that. The next step is to figure out where they meet and to show that that's got to have an x value of a. Remember that I haven't yet used the fact that the two gradients are perpendicular. So, so far, this technique works for any old simultaneous equation thing. So they meet when... Uh, um, the y values are equal, so they meet when root a over root x naught x plus this is equal to negative root a over root x1 x minus this. So this is simply shoving in line 1 and line 2 into those two things. Now just take a look before you get going. What we're going to do is we're going to collect up like terms and um, get all the A stuff onto one side. So we're going to add this to both sides, and we're going to subtract this from both sides. So I have root A on root X naught X. Remember that it is a show that question, so do not just go, hey, I'm done. It's not an impressive strategy. Never mind. Right, so we've got this sitting here, and now we're going to subtract root A root X naught. Okay, cleaning up the right-hand side first, I get negative root A into root X1 plus root x naught, and on this side I've got x into, hmm, what have we got? Uh, common, no, I'm going to do this more slowly so that no one gets lost. So we've got root a root x naught plus root a on root x1. Now I'm going to get a common denominator in here. Hopefully the battery is not going to run out on the laptop. Root a root x1 plus root a root x0 equals negative root a into this. That gives me x is equal to negative root a root x0 x1. I'm going to chuck that together over x1 plus x0. You can see lots of stuff is going to disappear. Here I've got root a, and here, bringing this over here. So you should be feeling really happy because a whole ton of stuff is about to simplify away. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Now, the last thing we've got left is this, which is not equal yet to a, but it's about to be. Perpendicular gradients. So what does that mean? Now, I've paused the video here, and you can finish this off. Right, m1, m2 is equal to root a on root x0 times negative root a on root x1 must be equal to negative 1. That gives me um, negative a is equal to negative root x0 x1. Therefore, a is equal to root x0 x1. Therefore, up in here, remember, we were left with we had x equals negative root x0 x1, which is equal to negative a. Therefore, point is on the directrix. So there you go. I have got 20 seconds to spare. That is the most perfectly timed video I've made. Thanks for watching. If you've got a better way to do it, all cool, right? Go for your life. And you should try this in parametric form, especially if you are aiming for outstanding this year.